Alright, y'all may be seated. Wow. Wow, what a, you know, what a start. Um, you know, I was just kind of thinking in the back while I was, you know, back there. Uh, you know, we, we don't have to stop worshiping just because the music stops or just because we read our um, three, three chapters a day in the Bible or, you know, whatever, you know. Worship never has to stop worship. Um, it's never in your whole life to be a worship. And, and it's just something, you know, I thought about and you know, wanted y'all to think about too. Um, so what does this world tell you you need for satisfaction? Um, you know, it tells you a lie. You know, it tells you you need money, you need fame, you need fortune, you need to look the best, be the best, whatever it is. Um, how many of y'all seen Facing the Giants? It's a lot. Um, yeah, I've seen it too, obviously. Um, and one of my favorite scenes from that movie is um, the specific scene that they had when they're in the locker room. Uh, the team had already lost like three games. Everybody was doubting the team. You know, the parents were even you know talking about you know getting rid of the coach and how terrible this team is. And the coach sits everybody down in the locker room before practice and he says. He holds up a $10 bill and he says, 10 bucks to the person that can name who won the state championship 10 years ago. And like the kids are throwing out all these, you know, random guesses and none of them can guess it. So he goes, okay, how about five years ago? And the kids, you know, are still trying to guess it. Um, you know, guess what, 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 what school won the state title five years ago. You know, none of them could guess the team that won it five years ago. Um, and he, you know, the main, pes the, the main message that um, he wanted the whole team to get was that, um, you know, the titles only last so long until they're long forgotten. Um, and he told his boys, you know, you're not here um, to make money, get glory, and then die, you know, but God sent his son to die for us so we can just have a never ending worship for him, so we can live for him. Um, so if you have your Bibles, um, open your Bibles to Matthew 16. We're going to start in uh, uh, verse 24. Okay, verse 24. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever, whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good will it be for, the, for someone to gain the whole wide world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone get in exchange for their soul? You know, just take that in for a second. Gain the whole wide world and lose your soul. Everything that we, you know, start, you know, from, I don't know, what age, you know, whatever age you start having your own ambitions, your own thoughts, your own, uh, you know, your own glory for yourself. You know, I was, I was eight years old, and I wanted to be a professional baseball player. I wanted everybody to know my name. I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to have a bunch of nice cars. I wanted a nice looking wife, you know, and, and, and that's how it was. <laughs> But, I mean, gain the whole wide world and lose your soul. You know, and, and then you just think about it, you know, although it's, there's, there's no way that was going to happen. You know, that was my ambition. And that was, you know, what I wanted for myself. Um, and, and everybody has their own ambitions. Everybody has their own, you know, thoughts, what they want to do. Um, you know, seniors, y'all playing out, you know, what you, your life is going to be. You know, how you want to live it, how much money you want to make, um, and all this other stuff. Um, Tyler, I got a Tom Brady video. Um, for those of y'all who don't know who Tom Brady is, um, he's a quarterback uh, for the New England Patriots. Um, and he, he's in the 60 Minutes interview. Um, it was after he won one of his Super Bowls. He's won three Super Bowls. He's attended five, um, who he's lost twice by the New York Giants. Um, but <laughs> 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 <laughs 
But y'all can go ahead and send the video. Tom Brady, the quarterback of the New England Patriots, is not only one of the NFL's best players, he's one of the NFL's great stories. At the tender age of 30, he has already won three Super Bowls, an accomplishment that ranks him with some of the best quarterbacks ever to play the game. And he's having one of the greatest seasons in pro football history. When we first reported on him back in 2005, he seemed underrated and almost overlooked. He doesn't have the arm of Peyton Manning, he doesn't have tattoos, and he doesn't take steroids, and he's never held out for more money. All he knows how to do is win. <laughs> That's what you always wanted. <laughs> you're right, you're right, it has. And I didn't think it came with all the other baggage, though. In addition to his success on the field and in the field often, there is also the $60 million 10-year contract to play with the Patriots. I mean, I'm making more money now than I ever thought I could ever make playing football. <laughs> but with all that money, fame, and career accomplishments, we were surprised to hear this from him. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and, and still think there's something greater out there for me? I mean, maybe a lot of people would say, hey, man, this is what it is. I reached my goal, my dream, my life is... Me, I thank God. It's got to be more than this. What's the answer? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Mm. It's a lot to take in. I mean, just think about that. I mean, he has no idea, like, what, what it is. You know? And, they, and everybody out there tells you, you know, money is going to build your happiness. Money is going to make it all. You know, it's going to make your life, you know, this is what you're going to have to live on. You're going to be happy, you're going to be satisfied. You know, you'll have it all. You know, and I, and I just sit here and think about it, you know. Um, you know, Robin Williams died of depression, you know, just a couple days ago. I mean, the man was, you know, the man was pretty wealthy. He played in I don't know how many movies. He had a lot of money. He's dying of depression. You can't tell me money's going to buy me happiness. You know, Tom Brady is one of the, one of the richest quarterbacks. He's also one of the uh, best quarterbacks to play the game right now. He has all these stats, all these, you know, Super Bowl rings. You know, he, he has it made for him, and he, he still won it. What, what's going on? You know, why am I not settled? Why am I not satisfied? Why am I not happy? You know, and, and we, we sit here and think, um, and I just want you to think about this too. Um, I wrote down, trophies are gonna collect dust, um, records are gonna be shattered, you know, money is all going to pass away once we die. Everything that we spend our life working for, for our own glory, is all a waste if it's, if it's just for you. You know, unless you're doing it for God, and we'll get to that in just a second, but everything, you know, you're doing for your own glory and your own self is a waste. You know, and nobody knew it better than, than Solomon himself. Solomon is the son of David, King David. Um... And if, if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you'll, you'll totally understand where I'm going with this. Um, and I'll explain it to you. Um, Solomon was one of the wisest men to ever live. Actually, he's the wisest man to ever live. Um, I, I really doubt anybody now is more wiser than Solomon. Um, but anyway, you know, he, he had it all. He was loaded with money. He, he was a king. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, that was Bible times. He had a lot of money, Bible times. Well, you know, there's been a lot of research done. I don't, I don't know if it's fully true. Um, but from what I've heard, there's some research done. And, you know, if you compare him to some of the, the richer people now, he would be just as rich and maybe even richer than some of them now. That's how much money he had. And this was all the way back in B.C. times. The man was loaded. The man had, I don't know how many wives. It, it says it. I can't remember. But he has over, like, a hundred wives in his house just living there. The man has it all. You know, and he's still depressed. He, he doesn't understand. He goes through everything. He goes through alcohol. He goes through um, everything just to try to fix his life. Um, and, and he writes the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, and one of the things he tells it, tells it as it is, you know, everything you're doing for yourself is a strive after the wind. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever chased wind before, but... I don't think you're going to catch it. I mean, just think about it. It's kind of, it looks kind of dumb if you're just chasing after the wind. You're chasing after nothing. You know, and, and that's what 
You're chasing after your own desires and your own glorious life. You know, you're chasing after nothing. You're out there, you know, you're reaching for the winds and you can't catch anything. You're not getting anything. Um, so he goes on and he writes, you know, this is one of the uh, uh, verses that I use. And it's Ecclesiastes 1-2 and he writes, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Meaning, everything that you're doing for yourself is meaningless. Now that I think about that, we, we spend a lifetime, you know, trying to, you know, build up what we want and build up what we think we want. Um, you know, we try to be the best baseball player, best football player at school. Um, we spend so much time, you know, practice, hours and hours of practice. You know, and, and that's just not just with baseball or football, it's with dance, it's with bands, um, it's with anything. You know, everything that you're doing for yourself, and I'm not saying don't go do it, like don't, don't play any sports or anything, just sit and open your Bible. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I want to be the best, you know? I'm doing this for me, this time's for me, if that's, your, if that's your goal in this whole thing, then you're not doing it for God. If you're doing it for God, you would be doing it more for, um, you know, ministering, you know, to others in your, in your sport or activity, you know, and you'll give your glory to God. And I'm not talking about, you know, I see a lot of people, you know, after winning a big game, you know, get on like Twitter or something, all glory to God, all glory to God. Well, you're not, you know, living it out, and it's not really all glory to God. It's just a tweet. But, you know, go back to Solomon. You know, meaningless, meaningless. Um, you know, that's just, that just hits me. Um, Tyler, too, go ahead and throw up the picture. That picture just speaks for itself. I mean... When you look about it, you know, you know, if you're living for yourself, cool, it's, it's really nice. You got that nice house for how long? 80 years, 60 years, who knows? I don't know how long all, all of us are gonna live. You got a nice house though. But it's really funny because you end up in the same place as the dude that has the little hut. You know, it, it's funny, but it's so true. It's, I mean, when you just think about it, you, you're doing everything and everything's for a loss. All right, so now we're gonna flip our Bibles to Genesis 11. And this is where it's gonna tie our game and everything's gonna tie together. So chapter 11, we're going to start in verse 3. Once I back it's there. Am I good? I'm not far. Okay. And they say to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They use bricks instead of stone and tar or of mortar. They said, come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower that reaches to the heavens. So we make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered all over the face of the earth. Okay, so this tower is called the Tower of Babel. I don't think it would be really called the Tower of Babel, but it's called the Tower of Babel because if you, you know, go on to read, um, you know, God comes down and he gives all these people a different language so they can't understand each other and they can't finish this tower. Um, but anyway, they're building this tower so people can look at them, you know, years and centuries and centuries from, you know, after... Um, and just look at it and just be like, wow, look how, look how great these people are for building this tower. You know, look, at, look how great they are. You know, look how cool this tower is. How did they build this tower? I don't know, but it's cool and all glory to them. And that's what they wanted. It sounds silly, but that's what they wanted. Um, so I'm going to compare it to this. You know, if you, you don't have to flip it there. I'll read it for you. But if you go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, um, it says... Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God in your bodies. So if we compare your body being a temple and the Tower of Babel, 
My question to you is, whose glory are you going to stand for? If people look at your life, do people see you standing for God's glory, or do people see you standing for your own glory? You know, he says, you were bought with a price. Christ came down and died for you so you can have a relationship with God so that you can just worship Him in your life. You know, we were created to worship God and none alone. You know, and, and, and things get in the way. You know, we, we've let sin get in our way. we let our own ambitions and our own, um, you know, striving after our own wins. You know, I don't know what Joel's wins are, but you're striving after what you think you want and you think you need, whether it's money or fame or, or popularity or whatever it may be. Um, and that's how it is. You know, but your bodies are a temple. You know, when you, when we go back to school, do people see you standing for God's glory or are you standing for your own glory? You know, and I don't want you to answer out loud, of course, but I just want you to ask yourself that. Whose glory are you standing for? You know, you're, you're made to worship Him. Nothing more. You know, everything that you try to chase after is unsatisfying. <coughs> you know, and I'm going to call it as it is because, I mean, you watch Tom Brady, you know, I, I mentioned, you know, Robin Williams, you know. You know, it's not satisfying. And, you know, middle schoolers, I mean, I don't expect y'all to understand, you know, having a lot of money. Um, but we're going to go with um, how well known you are in your school. We use that as your example. You know, how much trouble that causes you, how much it takes you away from God, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing to, to, to be well known, but I'm saying if you just want to be well known so you, for your own glory and so people can look how cool you are, then it's all for a wrong purpose. You know, I, I know that, that you're going to be tempted. You know, you, I, it's easy to say, oh, I, I'm going to stop chasing after what I want right now. You know, it's easy to say that now. And, and when, when you get outside these doors, it's, it's going to be, you know, so hard. You know, but I want to challenge you tonight to ask yourself, you know, to just sit and think, whose glory am I standing for? When people, when people look at my life, do people see me living for God or do people see me living for myself? Yeah, I'm talking to myself just as much as I'm talking to y'all. But, you know, and I, I just wonder sometimes, I don't know what people think about me. I don't know what people know if I'm living for God or not. You know? And it's something you're going to have to, you know, personally think and be truthful about. Don't just tell yourself, oh, I think I'm living for God. Truly ask yourself, are you, am I living for God or not? So as I close, I just want y'all to just, just bow y'all's heads and just close your eyes and just think for a second. Nobody's looking around. I just want y'all to have y'all's eyes closed. You know, there's nothing special about it, you know, having your eyes closed and bowing your heads. But I just want y'all to think. You know, just think to yourselves. If you're someone in here in this room, and I know there's a few, but if you're someone in this room that's, you know, that's been striving after the wind, that's been chasing their own ambitions, and they just don't know the Father, they don't know the love that Christ has come for us, as Christ has given for us. You know, and they're, they're tired of just chasing after, you know, what they think they want, and they're ready to just, just surrender it all and just come to the Father. If that's you, I want you, as soon as we start this next song, to go talk to either Steve in the back over here, I want you to go talk to Cody, I want you to go talk to Britton, you know, I'll, I'll come down, you can talk to me, but talk to someone. Do not leave this place without coming the Father. 
Don't have fear about it. Don't be afraid about it. Come. And for those of you, you know, that do know the Father and do know the love of Christ and that, are, that do have Him, if, if there's just something that you just want to pray about, you know, you can come to me, you can also come to Cody and Britain. Um, if there's something that you, you're just tired, you know, you, you know God and you just are tired of chasing after what you think you want and you just want to pray about it and just, just have, a, have a little prayer just to get you started, you know, please, by all means, just come to me, come to Cody, come, come to Britain, come to Steve, come to Joni, come to someone. Come to someone. Don't, don't leave this place with just leaving it in your mind, in your heart. But really come to someone. Speak to someone. Let's pray, guys. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the love that you have for us. I thank you so you, we don't have to chase after our own ambitions and just forfeit our soul and just lose our soul, God. God, I pray you forgive us when we do, can, when we do get consumed by the things in this world. You know, just fight for our love, God. God, I pray for each and every one in here, God, as we will be tempted, as we will face it. God, I pray that, you know, when, when, when we are faced with our own ambitions, God, I pray that we can just surrender it all to you and just walk in you alone, God. God, we love you. And I pray that, God, if there's anybody in here tonight, anyone at all that's just struggling with something or just wants to come to know the Father tonight or whatever it may be, God, I pray that they will not be afraid, they will not have fear, and that they'll just come to, come to one of us tonight, God. That they will just come to one of us and come to know you, God. And if there's someone just struggling with, with getting the whole wide world and they're just tired of it, God, I pray they'll just come talk to one of us, God. God, we love you. We'll praise you forever. Your son's awesome name, I pray.
thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the scriptures that are brought out tonight. And Father, I pray that in everything that we say and do, God, that there would be nothing about a show, but it all be about your glory. Because Father, things done in your glory and for your glory and for your name alone, those are the things that last. Those are the things that matter. Father, those are the things that bring life. Father, help us bring those things out because of you in us, because of Christ in us, our hope of glory. God, we thank you that we can even come into your presence. We thank you that you gave us Jesus as a sacrifice that we might be able to even come in and talk to you. We might be able to live for you, God. And so because you did, because of Jesus and all he's done, it's in his name that we pray. And all the people said,